Welcome back students uh, to this week's and modules uh, lecture. So, in the last two lectures we have gone through looked at the basic fluid properties, then we derived the uh, rate of shear strain and this is an important property which we are going to use in our further analysis. So, so we are going to so, this is the last point where we concluded written uh, the extensional and the shear strain rates. Extensional is epsilon xx, epsilon yy and epsilon zz, whereas the shear strain rates are epsilon xy, epsilon xz and epsilon Z, uh, zy. So, this is the matrix of the strain rates. and the values of epsilon xx, epsilon yy and epsilon zz we had already defined we had already derived that epsilon xx was del u by del x. Okay. And similarly epsilon yy was del v del y and epsilon zz was del w del z. So, after that we are going to start the classification of fundamental equations. classification of fundamental equations. Okay. So, actually there are three laws of conservation of physical systems. <coughs> the first one is conservation of mass. This you have already seen that is continuity equation. The second one is uh, the second conservation equation is conservation of momentum. And this is analogous to Newton's second law. The third is conservation of energy and this has something to do with first law of thermodynamics. All right. So, the three unknowns that must be obtained simultaneously from above three basic equations are <coughs> well 
velocity, second is pressure. So, writing V pressure which is thermodynamic by P and T as temperature absolute temperature given by T. All right. So, we actually consider two independent. So, when it comes to thermodynamic variables, we consider two independent thermodynamic variables. which are actually pressure and temperature. Okay. However, the final form of conservation equations also contains four other thermodynamic variables and what are those variables? We are going to write it down. One is rho, also called density. Second is H, that is enthalpy. There is mu, viscosity, and K, thermal. Conductivity. All right. So we go to the next page. So we assume something, and that assumption is that we assume that there is a thermodynamic equilibrium. So under the assumption of thermodynamic equilibrium rho is rho as a function of pressure and temperature h is also a function of pressure and temperature so, mu is equal to mu is also a function of pressure and temperature and K that is the thermal conductivity K is also the. So, basically all these uh, independent I mean dependent variable uh, are a function of pressure and temperature under thermodynamic equilibrium alright. These values So, which values? These values rows, h, mu and k, these are these values are generally in form of tables, charts or some theoretical or 
theoretical you know formula usually in hydraulics for our purposes no, rho mu k r assumed constant and h is proportional to temperature. So, in this particular course, we are going to deal mainly with rho and mu which will be considered constant, alright. So, the discussions above, so the above consideration applies to a fluid of uniform homogeneous composition, which means diffusion and chemical reactions are not considered ok. All right. So, with this background in mind we will get started with our first equation. So, our first equation is conservation of mass or also called equation of continuity all right so actually all the three laws for the derivation require the particle derivative or a substantial derivative or the material derivative which we have already seen in our uh, uh, lecture, I mean previous lectures. So, I will take you to that where we wrote the material derivative. So, here, so material derivative of any quantity is written as dq dt as del q del t plus u del q del x plus v del q del y plus w del q del z. So, this is the material derivative. So, we going back to so the three laws including this one the three laws of conservation utilize the particle substantial derivatives ok. So, that is d d t is equal to del del t plus ok. So, this is what we utilize actually in this particular course we are going to deal with only conservation of mass and conservation of uh, momentum. The third equation uh, the, the first law the, third, uh, the first law of thermodynamics the conservation of energy is outside the scope. So, we are not going to deal uh, with that in this particular course, but for the people who study mechanical engineering that law is also very much applicable. So, writing now 
law of conservation of mass okay so what does this law says law of conservation of mass we said that this particular equation is will be used for the derivation of this uh, equation of continuity so the law of conservation of mass says that mass is equal to rho and this is v i am writing a different v because v we mostly say in hydraulics v as velocity so this is constant right so that is conservation of mass all right so this equation we call one for now and this equation we will call equation number 2 all right so if we put equation number 2 in equation number 1 this becomes del d m is equal to is equal to 0 is equal to by chain rule rho all right now this you see there are two terms on the right hand side rho d v dt plus v d rho dt where v is the volume okay so <coughs> actually the rate of change of volume so the total change in volume so dv dt can be related to the fluid velocity how if we notice that the normal strain rate is equal to rate of volume increase of a particle per unit volume okay so <clears throat> the normal strain rate actually is equal to the rate of volume increase of a particle per unit volume all right so we go to another page all right that means epsilon xx epsilon xx plus epsilon yy plus epsilon zz is equal to this is the definition 1 by v dv dt all right so we also know that this is equal to from our previous lectures derivation epsilon xx was del u del x epsilon yy was del v del y and this was epsilon zz was del w del z this was what we actually had derived all right and this actually is nothing but divergence of v or this so this is a velocity right because it is u v w all right and this equation we call equation number 4 combining equations 1 to 
to eliminate this volume what we can get we will get so we are going to get d rho dt plus rho divergence of v so this is velocity v not the volume v is equal to 0 or all right so this is equation number 5 all right if we assume incompressible flow then reduces to divergence of v is equal to 0 all right and this is nothing but equation of continuity all right very good so what we have done is we have been able to derive the equation of continuity so we and this is equation number 6 so we look at a related concept called a stream function now what is a stream function if the continuity equation reduces to only two non zero terms then it can be satisfied identically replaced by so called a stream function which is given by psi ok so continuity equation in 2D let us call it x y plane 2D steady compressible flow is written as so if I study that means there is not going to be any del del t term right so we will have only del del x because it is compressible del del y of rho v is equal to 0 right this is equation number 
7 all right if we define the stream function psi such that rho u is del psi by del y and rho v is minus del psi by del x. So, we have first we have written the continuity equation in two dimension and if we are defining a function which we will call stream function such that it satisfies rho u is equal to del psi by del y and rho v is del psi by minus del psi by del x. Then if we substitute equation 8 in equation 7, we observe we see that equation number 7 is satisfied identically. Of course, the condition here is if phi is continuous to second order derivatives. So, before we conclude I would like to you know just look at it ok, how? So, del del x rho u how I mean why how is it satisfied identically? So, rho u is del psi del x so it will be del del x of sorry plus del del y of rho v is minus del psi del x ok. ok. So, this means so LHS and RHS was so ok. So, I think this is uh, right time to start to finish today's lecture and uh, we start from where we are going to we start in the next lecture from where we have just stopped and thank you for listening I will see you in the next lecture.